Hi, I'm Jack Anslow, and welcome to my Embedded News video blog, which is a companion to my free online newsletter, The Embedded News. Today we're going to do a short talk about measuring idle time in real-time systems. You know, it's interesting. We build these real-time systems where we know that if we violate any of the timing parameters, the system's going to fail. And, and yet, all too often, we don't measure time. To me, engineering is all about measuring things. If you don't measure things, it's not engineering, it's art. And when it comes to something that's critical to the performance of the system, like the real-time behavior, we've got to take some data. It's pretty easy to do. You know, if you have a free GPIO bit, you can toggle that bit when nothing's going on. But things tend to get a little bit more complicated than that. Than that. It can be difficult to understand the results sometimes. So here's my board. And my program is driving a GPIO bit high whenever the system is idle. And I'm monitoring that bit with the oscilloscope. The data is pretty hard to interpret. What does any of this mean? This is, of course, a, a real program in which idle time is not constant. It varies depending upon the workload of the software. The scope's giving us a lot of data, but it's hard to make sense of it. But it gets worse. In the real world of embedded systems, often we use an RTOS. If you're using an RTOS, there is no idle loop. There's nothing to instrument. What do we do? There is a cool trick. Get this meter from Radio Shack. It's $25. Don't get a digital multimeter. Don't get a digital anything. Get this really bottom of the line meter with a needle. Then, like I said, instrument your code to drive a GPIO bit high when the system is idle and low when it's not. It's not going to work with an RTOS. So in that case, what you do is you find the idle task hook. This is a function that most RTOSs provide. It's a null function that gets called when the RTOS has nothing to do. There's nothing inside of it. It's there for us to instrument. And in this case, with this code, you can see this is for Micrium's Micro CoS. I've instrumented that function or in order to drive this bit up when there's nothing going on. The next part of the equation is to solve this equation, which is basically the voltage. Max volts is the voltage of your system. If it's a 5-volt system, it's 5. A 3-volt system, it's 3. And this will give you an, a resistor. Find a potentiometer that is somewhat bigger than the resistor value that was calculated in this equation. Now, take the meter apart. There's one screw that holds the back on. You remove the back and you'll see this 29K resistor in there. You can either clip that resistor out, or in this case what I needed was a 5K pot, so I just soldered it across the 29K resistor, because 29K in parallel with 5K is pretty close to 5K. Now you set the voltmeter to measure DC volts, Connect the ground lead to your system, and connect the hot lead to the GPIO bit that you're toggling in that, in that idle task loop. What we're effectively doing is using the mechanical inertia of the needle to damp out all those rapid variations that you saw in the oscilloscope. The next step is to calibrate the meter. Have your system 100% idle, so it's just running that idle task hook and really nothing else. Turn the pot so that the needle is all the way over at the right. Now the voltmeter is an idle meter. When the needle's all the way to the right, it's 100% idle. When it's all the way to the left, it's 0% idle. And of course, in between represents other levels of idleness, so to speak. So check it out. The voltmeter is giving us the idle time. And you can see it varying in real time as the behavior of the program changes. The scope is showing the same stuff, but it means absolutely nothing to me. I like to hook up a meter like this to a system on the very first day of the project so that you can track where the idle time is going. I mean, suppose you're debugging along, you've got 80% idle, 78% idle, 76% idle. Whoops, 30, what's gone wrong? Well, whatever the last step you took is where the problem is. Of course, this isn't going to work in every circumstance. If your idle time changes rapidly, well, the silly little needle won't be able to keep up. But in a, a large number of cases, this is a really cheap way of getting some good performance data. So there you have it. A $25 voltmeter can give you tons of insight into the real-time behavior of your system. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to go to Gensel.com, where there are over a thousand articles and plenty more videos about better ways of building embedded systems.